Good morning. I'm Frank Kaufman. I'm the director of the Professor's World Peace Academy. Welcome to our ongoing uh, Professor's Interview series. Uh, this morning, we are very fortunate to have with us uh, Professor uh, Taufik Hamid, uh, Dr. Taufik Hamid. Um, the occasion of this program or, or this episode concerns the resurgence of jihadi violence in Europe in recent weeks. There have been a number of incidents close together and particularly uh, gruesome in their uh, violent manifestation, beheadings in two places uh, in France, a mass shooting near a synagogue in um, Vienna, and uh, this is cause for alarm, cause for concern. And um, we're very fortunate to have with us to shed some light on this matter, Dr. Hamid. Dr. Taufik Hamid, his educational background is that he's a medical doctor and, uh, and has an MLIT. Uh, he's an expert on radicalism and is a Muslim reformer. Dr. Taufik Hamid is an Islamic thinker and reformer and a one-time Islamic extremist from Egypt himself. He was a member of the radical Islamic organization Jama Islamia, uh, initials J.I., of Egypt. He worked closely with Dr. Ayman Zawahiri, who later became the second in command of Al-Qaeda. After being radicalized, in the J.I. approximately 35 years ago, he had an awakening of his human conscience, recognized the threat of radical Islam, and started to teach modern peaceful interpretations of classical Islamic core texts. Dr. Hamid is the author of several books, including Inside Jihad, How Radical Islam Works, Why It Should Terrify Us, how to defeat it. Inside Jihad has been recommended by many experts in the field of countering radicalism, including former CIA directors. Two of them co uh, commend uh, this book, uh, I believe probably in its uh, promotional uh, literature, CIA directors, senators, Congress people, security experts, and many others. It's a great pleasure and good fortune to have with us this morning uh, Dr. Hamid, please join me to welcome uh, Taufik Hamid to our program. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Professor Hamid. We're very grateful that you can make it on with us today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Frank, anytime. Uh, wonderful, thanks. It's, you know, we have such a short time, even though for most people, 30 or 40 minutes sounds long, but the issues are extensive and profound. And so I'm going to be in a bit of a rush because you're, you're a precious entity and it's a rare chance to have someone with your, uh, prow with your prowess and expertise in this particular field. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get through a couple of intro pieces, but mostly I just, we just want to uh, get all the uh, insight and wisdom and knowledge uh, that comes from your extensive experience. The basic part of the basic reason why I've asked you to be on with me today is that there have been a series of. Uh, oh, can you help me first? Is the term jihadi correct politically incorrect, or is this does it accurately describe a type of violence that is committed in the name of? Islam, even though we uh, are. Absolutely. In, in the Arab world, when uh, the media use the word jihadi, yes. uh, they, even in the Arab media, uh, they, they mean the violent, radical ones that do, they do suicide bombing and all these groups. So absolutely correct. Okay, very good. I'll use that as the term, and thanks. For, I feel more confident now. And there have been three recent events in... Uh, in uh, Europe, uh, that that are they're particularly gruesome. They're horrific and yeah. shock shocking. And if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. there there was a period of calm. There there was an there was an extended kind of cessation of 
of the success of these types of attacks. And then there was a beheading in France, a beheading in uh, Nice, a, a teacher in a classroom, then in a, in a, in a church, another beheading. There was a, a mass shooting in Vienna. It was near a synagogue. We don't know the extent to which the synagogue um, was central to that. And um, so I have all of these, all of these um, uh, events uh, with little blurbs in front of me, uh, but I don't want to lose or waste too much time uh, going through that. I hope that our listeners are familiar with these strong pieces of news that have been widely disseminated in the media. The same day that the Nice attack happened, it was a knife attack, when three dead, several injured, one beheaded. Uh, that same day, a copycat was apprehended in Evelyn, uh, a Paris suburb. I don't know if this would have been coordinated to happen in more than one place. Um, in some of my reading, uh, I see that uh, that a, a several, not several, but at least one, if not more than one of these assailants and 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 uh, uh, violent, extremely violent attackers had been the beneficiaries of the efforts of European nations to embrace them, to educate them, to provide them scholarships. Um, one of them, uh, one of them, had been apprehended and had been confirmed as having left these points of view. And then this very one who was released back into public life turned out to, in fact, commit uh, violent jihadi assault, resulting in horrific death and uh, disruption of society. Uh, the lawyer of, uh, of the Vienna mass shooting says he was a nice boy from a good family who fell in with the wrong crowd. And this whole, this whole ability for people to just miss what's in front of their eyes. I think you, uh, uh, Taufik, have an especial insight into those kinds of things. So if this is enough of a setup, I'd love to hear where you come in and what you can offer us in terms of helping our understanding. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Frank, for this introduction to the topic. Uh, I'm basically a medical doctor. I, I, I was graduated in, uh, in originally. I live here in the United States now, but I was graduated in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, and uh, during my life, I joined the radical uh, Islamic group called Jama'a Islamiyah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I met actually with the, currently the first in command of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri. And uh, I was going to travel to Afghanistan to, 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 to wage jihad and share in the, the phenomena of jihad in Afghanistan itself. But mm. thank God I mm. didn't continue. Anyway, during my life, I also uh, studied in addition to medicine and developed novel techniques in uh, cognitive psychology. So it happened that I came from within these groups and I, uh, I have depth in the knowledge of cognitive psychology or the field of cognitive psychology. And in addition, I started the modern commentary for the Quran at the theological level, which actually garnered more than two million followers. And I have also many followers following my YouTube videos. We are talking here about millions of uh, uh, views, uh, tens of millions. Fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, Fantastic. Yeah. So this is the background. And this put me in a position where I can offer, uh, I believe, the most important part of uh, the problem, which is the solution. Many people have spoken about the problem for years and years and years. Yes, we know there is a problem. Then what is the solution? This is what I can offer. Wonderful. Uh, I just want to say, uh, Tafik, that we will post all the links to these YouTube videos and uh, the ways our listeners can uh, learn from uh, this ongoing success that you have with communicating your insights. Uh, so um, if I may, I'm going to add just two more little thoughts. These were offered by uh, friends, one is that one is that the the death of major major leaders in violent jihad, um, such as um, the ISIS leader al Baghdadi and uh, the uh, Iranian uh, 
uh, military figure Suleimani. Uh, is that correct? Kasim Suleimani. Kasim Suleimani. Suleimani. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that and also also the the, the uh, uh, evolution of some peaceful peace towards Israel is is kind of uh, uh, arousing a certain type of jihadi Islam interpretation, saying not so fast. That's not Islam. This is Islam. It's uh, that the re arising or the new increase in incidents mm-hmm. is it something like in a vac where there's a vacuum, like in Gangland, New York, or something where there's a vacuum. People are vying to see who's going to be the next. Uh, big leader. So th- this is another an additional angle. If your insights are, can also speak to either of those things, and then it's yours. Please take it away. Mm, uh, actually, and before just explaining this point, I would like to mention that my YouTube's and my uh, the Quranic in commentary and what I do is tip is in Arabic language. So probably your audience will find it difficult to follow <laughs> for them. But they are in the Middle uh, East as a source of the problem itself. Um, I believe good. the source of the problem comes from the Middle East and it is fair to fight it there. And when I mean fight, yes. I fight it at the ideological and sci- psychological levels using certain forms of effective education. This is how can I Very summarize good. it. Uh, and using the internet as a vehicle. Regarding the point that you mentioned, uh, look, Frank, I see the, what happens in Europe. It's We can always try to find the, some reasoning, like uh, uh, the killing of Qasem Soleimani uh, and, the, and the killing of some leaders of Al-Qaeda, like uh, Al-Baghdadi. Uh, and and, and the, you can say, yes, they are trying to uh, rise up again after this killing to say, here, we are here, for example. But I see it from a different angle, a, an additional angle, not a different, but additional angle, which is... The, there is a level of radicalism that exists in uh, the mindset of uh, many in, uh, 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 in uh, Muslims in Europe, uh, it's particularly young Muslims. And uh, this level of radicalism may manifest and may not manifest depending on situations. Initially, they can, for example, find the reason like the, the peace treaty with Israel and, and start to do some attacks here and there to, re, to object to it. Uh, or some uh, uh, criticism of uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad and uh, uh, like uh, what we have seen in France, for example. Yeah. So they can find always the reason to justify the attacks. And today they can say, oh, you insulted the prophet. Next day okay. they can tell you, you drink alcohol. Next day mm. they, you don't wear the hijab. Next day they, you don't stone women to death. So it's endless, actually. The level of radicalism mm. must, must be treated because today they will find the reason. Tomorrow, believe me, they will find another reason. And this is, as mm. I mentioned to you one day, it's like cancer. You don't detect the, the, the damage that it can cause and its real threat until it is relatively late when the cancer mm-hmm. mass increase to a certain level. So as long as the radicals increase in any uh, European society, they may not manifest until they reach a certain level. And then you have a huge number of population that it will be too late actually to resist them. Some people think Europeans mm. may kick Muslims out of Europe. I see it the other way around. Muslims may kick the Europeans from Europe. So it's, it's <laughs> a growing problem that you don't see its real effect and the damage until it is too late. When the, when the number of people who believe in such a belief, who want to implement Sharia rules in Europe, exceed certain numbers, then by, even by democracy, they can take the lead and control things. And you, whoever object to them, Whoever refuses the Sharia rules, he can be punished by them violently. So we are dealing mm. with a real time time bomb. Simple. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now, um, mm. this is this is uh, riveting or, or or stunning to hear. It's it's a kind of a wake up call with your alarm on steroids. I mean, it's like ringing. But um, can you? Uh, before we go into this, which is hugely important, how how is it, how do people not see 
radicalization? What goes on where people are capable of functioning? They're going to their mm -hmm. office. They're going to their school. Uh, what is what is that capacity, either for the or for the yeah. uh, non-Muslim Europeans to miss it, or mm -hmm. for the for the active for the uh, jihadi committed people to be so capable uh, of uh, this? I'll tell you, Frank, the real core of the problem. And why the Europeans are not detecting it? Some people say when you grow, when you grow very gradually, like you put in, a, you know, the frog in a, a, a water that's cold, and, and you go gradually, yeah. it doesn't feel it until it is already boiling or too late for it to escape. But if you put it all yes. of a sudden, they feel it. So one of the reasons is that it is it's very gradual problem. But this is not the main reason why Europeans do not get it. Europeans do not get it because they do not and or probably refuse to have a clear definition for radical Islam or metrics. Mm. Uh, since I came mm. to Washington, D.C., I tried to put clear metrics for radical Islam. I call them ABCs mm. for radical Islam, which is A for mm. apostate killing, B, barbaric treatment of women like stoning and beating women, C, calling Jews pigs and monkeys, D, declaring jihad on non-Muslims to spread the religion, E, enslavement of female war prisoners and raping them, like ISIS. F, fighting mm. Jews before end days and killing all of them, which is a standard Sharia teaching. G, gay killing. So what I try to do is put metrics, because if you don't have metrics to measure something, you can continue forever without dealing with it. Uh, if, for example, I, if you want to try to treat uh, diabetes and you don't have metrics, who is diabetic, who is non-diabetic, how would you even start the treatment? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yes. the real problem comes to the definition. And the, in fact, I am writing today an op-ed, this is just coincidence, about putting metrics for radical Islam. So, so mm -hmm. and I wrote about it before, but I, I put it in my book, Inside Jihad, because without having metrics to define what is radical and what is not radical, you can't really even start solving this problem. So the French, the, the Europeans, and the British, if you ask it, them in the government, what is the definition of radical Islam that you have that you are trying to fight? I can reassure mm -hmm. you, they don't have. So they speak politically, yeah, we are fighting radical Islam, and more money goes to this to our organization to fight and radical Islam. But what is radical Islam? Is it just terrorism? This is the last step of radicalism. This is the manifestation of radicalism. If you want to treat the disease, see, not the yes. symptom, then you have to fight radicalism. If you don't have definition or metrics to measure radicalism and evaluate it, then it's just useless. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And then there's I guess there's a related problem of of the fear to say anything at all in in a, in certain circles. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It's it's um uh, right. This is one of the problems that that God forbid anyone would ever say any Muslim is any a problem ever anywhere. Uh, it's kind of a constraint of I don't know, call it polite company or proper respect. Uh, and then you're allowing great danger to be brewing. On, uh, absolutely. Right, on this is what happened already. But uh, the Europeans need to distinguish. And even here in America, people need to distinguish between attacking, attacking Muslims as human beings and attacking specific ideologies that promote violence. For, for example, ah, that can make a clear distinction. And once this is made clearly, in fact, you are protecting Muslims. When you fight radical views and opinions and ideas, then you are protecting young Muslims from being indoctrinated with this evil, and you, prote you are protecting the whole society. Uh, yes. So I think we need to distinguish between Muslims as human beings and individuals. Many of them are kind and nice and uh, lovely people. And the mm -hmm. ideology that's being taught in certain uh, places, mosques, Islamic schools, that has nothing to do with Muslims. This is an ideology that's against our humanity. You simply cannot respect 
women rights and respect the stoning of women to death in Sharia at the same time. You simply cannot. It's impossible to mm. respect gay rights and respect Sharia laws that justify killing them with no mercy. You have to define where, where are you standing? Are you standing with humanity and civilization or you are standing with Sharia laws because you don't want to offend some people? So I, I think I prefer some form of confrontation with this ideology and asking simply you can say if the Islamic organizations do not clearly denounce these values that I mentioned, we can't consider them moderate organizations. You need some definition. Oh, Otherwise, your support will go to the radicals, not the moderates. Oh uh, yeah. So there could actually be some sort of some sort of natural, normal paperwork in which the organizations need to comply with certain regulations and standards that are just simply humane. Ab absolutely. They're not targeted for absolutely. Mm, that's very, very yeah. That's a great that's a great recommendation. Um, some, as you were speaking, I'm thinking that there has to be a tremendous number of of f French Muslims or like or Muslims that they love their country there or, or Vienna or Austria, wherever we are in Europe and or mm -hmm. the U.S. that that would that would be want in every way to cooperate Absolutely. with the undermining of the. But they must. They must be. They must have certain unique difficulties. They can't. Sure. They can't sure. be seen to be siding with laïcité. Or what is? The, yeah. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Is there something uniquely yeah. difficult? Uh, Maybe you yourself of course. have certain. Uh, uh, the problem with people uh, who are trying to reform, I can say, people who reject the violent uh, interpretation are of two kinds, uh, or types. Type. One and type two. Type one are people who reject them but do not really put an alternative or have an alternative. They just give blind eye to them and and remain, continue as culture Muslims without thinking too much in this stuff or accepting them. But these people are okay. Mm -hmm. They are they are harmless and they are fine, but they are they do not have the capability of making the change. Okay. Those Yes. who are reformers and who have the knowledge and capability of making the change and defeating radical Islam at the ideological and psychological levels, uh, uh, these people are deprived from support from everyone, nearly everyone. Uh, the, they are working at individual levels, like myself and others, many of us, but we lack... Uh, any form of uh, support from governments, from individuals, from organizations. It's just individual errors, but, uh, efforts. How, on the other side, the radicals are well organized. They have organizations putting, giving them money. They can get, get money from uh, uh, some Islamic countries. So they are well equipped and they have a lot of money to spend on mosques. They are controlling many mosques. And people who are reformers mm. are just too weak financially to make the change. So uh, they needed a change. Mm. So they are working. They are doing a lot of effort. But you can magnify this effort by 100,000 times if someone came behind them and selected them correctly, who is effective, who is not, and just supported the ones who can make or the ones who can make a real change on ground. So I, I think without having this backing, they will be it will be just individual efforts that will die. The other ones are have, have support from everywhere. And they pretend that they are actually moderates and they gain even money from the some European countries. Uh, and yeah. that's why Europe is really going to face a major disaster in the future. Uh, it's very interesting. But is there is there a problem like if if a person who is a faithful faithful practicing Muslim with a deep care for the health, wholesome uh, uh, upbringing of young people and they start to get government money suddenly they're tools of the enemy or allied with the mm. enemy or they're the, do, do you understand it's like that the, the money to help is also going to 
draw attack from a certain side or a certain type of person. Yeah, but, that says, but, oh, he uh, doesn't but radical really... groups actually who, who disguised as moderates are gaining money from the governments. This is number one. Uh, number two, uh, there are enough moderate people who will not, now in the, moder- in the Islamic world, based on the work of many of the reformers, that is sufficient really to make this acceptable by many. Uh, ah, and okay. uh, let me be very clear governments can also support such things in many covert ways so and it can take the, mm-hmm. the title educational uh, missions for example not necessarily theological or mm-hmm. religious you can call it educational Got missions it. to bring peace and tolerance between civilizations so there are many ways if there is a will Frank there is a way but they don't have the will they are sure. waiting yeah, and right. it will be too late for them believe me they will not be able to make a change and it will it might end in civil wars because the moment the threshold mm. of the Muslim population reached certain percentage of the society, if this percentage started to uh, promote Sharia rules in the communities, then let me know how the European will feel when some people try to implement the Taliban and Al Qaeda and ISIS style in their countries. Are they going to stay silent? Or are they going to refuse this? And if they refuse, they will be attacked violently. And you, ne- you never know how it can go. So I think it's w- it will be more wise for them to have a stand and think again on their failed approaches to contain this problem and uh, try to use correct approaches in the future. This outstanding, Taufik. Um, uh, I want to come back to ex- th- this, I think, is the most important moment of our short conversation together. And I will, I will come back to this at the end. I don't because it's it's the it's the high relief. It's the shining light from our short visit here. Uh, there's one small thing I want to talk about. And then I want to come back to wrap up again on this point of of funding of education and the type of uh, uh, imbalance of of. Uh, the the radicals getting the type of support yeah. that you're describing. The the one thing I wanted to ask is that there's there's a habit of intellectuals or a habit of analysis that says, oh, this is nothing other than just like the gangs of Los Angeles or the gangs of New York. It's basically, you know, <laughs> uh, some kid, like if you're in a gang in L.A., you have to go commit a murder. You have to go yeah. do some violent yeah. thing. You have to go rape a woman. Uh, and so they see they see a similar type of dynamic of, of ghettoized, disenfranchised, and, and they and people argue that the, that the Islam of it all is just overlay. It's just um, it's just added fuel yeah. but you're yeah. basically looking at like a uh, membership of that yeah. that has yeah. violent and disruptive yes. can, can yes. you just absolutely uh, yeah. you raised a very important point and there is a very simple answer to it number one number one if these statistics is showing that the rate of suicide bombing and beheading is uh, in the the uh the, the minorities that are non-Muslim minorities, like Buddhists, Hindus, uh, Coptic uh, Christian minorities, uh, uh, a Baha'i <laughs> group communities, is the same as <laughs> the young Muslims, then they are correct. It has nothing to do with uh, ideology. <laughs> it's all about being disfranchised or a small minority suffering uh, 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 like uh, other small minorities. So it's all, it's, if uh-huh. they can compare the statistics, they will have the answer or the first answer <laughs> to this problem. The second answer is simple. If it is a gang, gangs usually do not have a lot of social media support for them. When someone beheads someone as a gang in somewhere, you don't find many people on social media saying, oh, excellent, go ahead, we will love you, God bless you. You don't see such things. I can reassure you, if the French people Mm. went to the social media of young Muslims in France, I have done this in the Middle East, and I'm telling you, in France, they will find the same results. A majority of of people, or significant percentage at least, are highly supportive of these beheadings. So when you see this number Mm. of support on social media, then the problem is not a small bunch of gangs, doing some crime. 
that's much mm. bigger of a problem that is infiltrating the whole society. So I think they need to do their mathematics and work before ju jumping to wrong conclusions. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> um, uh, Taufik, I'm so sensitive to your time. I know every network on earth is always hunting you down. And so I'm going to come to a close, but I want to, as I said, I want to come back to this main point that uh, those with money and, and governments need to recognize where support needs to go because the jihadi networks are high, well yes. funded, you say, well organized. And those who are working uh, against it in serious and effective ways are just like marbles in a pot, right? Each one on his own, no, without the necessary support um, in order to meet the challenge Absolutely. of this magnitude. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Taufik, I'm very yeah. grateful for your time. It's a, it's a precious thing. And uh, I hope we can call on you now and then uh, uh, until we can. Anytime, good, Frank, good you are handle. always more than welcome. Thanks so bye much bye. for being Thank with you. us today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.